Hey guys, my name's Luke, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be playing some Battle vs Chess, as you can see right here, Battle vs Chess. It's a new game I've wanted to bring to the channel, I want to give a big thanks to my buddy Nasty Flubber for giving me the code for this game, and yeah, let's get straight into it. So we're going to hit single player over here, we are going to start off with a tutorial, so you get to see what it's like and everything, but other apart from that, let's hop in. The tutorial, huh? We'll do the basic tutorial. This is the chessboard. It has 64 alternating light and dark squares in eight rows of eight squares each. At the start of the game, both players should have a light coloured square in the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Horizontal rows are called ranks. Vertical columns on the chessboard are called files. Rooks owe their name to their tower and castle-like look, which originates in the old tower-like seats on elephant pieces. The rooks' starting positions are in the board's corners. The knight's starting positions are alongside the rooks. They're usually designed to look like horses because they can jump over pieces. The queen is the most powerful piece in the game. She is placed beside the king. Black queen on black, white queen on white. The king may not be the strongest, but he's definitely the game's most important piece. If his majesty gets checkmated, the game ends. The bishops start on the squares to the left and right of the royal couple. And just like a real bishop, this piece has a far-reaching influence. The pawns can be considered as the infantry of each chess army. Their places are on the second rank of each player, directly in front of the main pieces. These are the white and the black pawns. Each player starts with eight pawns, one on each square of the second rank. Okay. You can easily tell pawns from the other pieces. They're the smallest and the most numerous pieces on the board. They're also the weakest but they can play a decisive role too. The pawn moves one square forward at a time, never backwards. An exception to this rule is the pawn's starting move, where it may move one or two squares forward. On all subsequent moves, the pawn may only move one square forward. Pawns cannot pass through other pieces. Here, the knight is blocking the pawn's path. The knight will have to be moved before the pawn can move. Okay. The pawn is the only piece that captures in a different way than he normally moves. He usually moves straight ahead, but captures one square diagonally. In the example, the white pawn can capture either black's pawn or knight. Okay. Despite their relative weakness and limited range, pawns still play an important strategic role thanks to their large numbers and unique actions. Okay. If a pawn reaches the final rank, the last enemy horizontal row, he can be promoted to any other piece, but Ooh, the powerful good. queen is usually chosen. Before I move on to the next talk speech really quick, guys, I just wanted to say I have got a Discord that will be linked in the description down below. So if you do have any video suggestions, please message me on Discord. It is the easiest way to contact me. Moving on. En passant is the pawn's special way of capturing pieces. When an opponent's pawn moves up level with your own, your pawn can take that piece by moving diagonally oh, yeah. in behind it. So if we move diagonally in behind it, we can take the piece, which is actually quite good. Now only one pawn may move two squares. Move that pawn. One of the white's pawns may capture the opponent's piece. Move that pawn. Well done. Opponent's pawn just moved two squares. Capture it with your pawn. No. It'd be like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course it would. That makes sense, Luke. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel, guys. I am going to be uploading as often as I can to this channel. And if you can make my dream come true of managing 50 subscribers, 
I greatly appreciate that and I'll give you every single one of you a steam key. Or I'll try to give as many of you a steam key as possible. These are the black and the white rooks. Each army has two rooks. Their starting positions are the corner squares of the board. Okay. The rook is a major piece, one of the strongest figures in the game. This is reflected by its tower-like appearance and its great strategic importance, comparable to a queen's. The reason why a rook is one of the major pieces is that it can move any number of squares vertically and horizontally. Number, huh? Two that. rooks used cleverly control many squares and can win a game for you. Despite its massive appearance, the rook cannot pass through other pieces. Our example shows pieces blocking the rook's path, an allied white and an opponent's black pawn. Here, the rook can capture the black pawn. The rook is the most effective at the center of the field or during the middle game or end game when most of the pieces are already captured and okay. it can take advantage of its wide range of movement. So the example shows a rook in a central position. Like a from here there. it covers lots more squares than from its starting position. I would definitely recommend you checking out this game for yourself. It seems really interesting at the moment and if you've ever seen Harry Potter it's pretty much like that. Move the white rook as far as possible. The white rook as far as possible. Just like that. Capture the opponent's piece with the white rook. So I'd have to move that way. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, next menu. Will... These are the white and black bishops. Each army contains two bishops. One is placed between the king's knight and the king. The other between the queen's knight and the queen. Makes sense. The bishop isn't really a major piece. It's more a minor one but it can have a lot of tactical value in certain game situations. OK, I'll definitely take a note on that. One of the two bishops starts on a white square, while the other one is located on a black square, and they stay on these colours for the whole of the game. Understandable. Each bishop moves diagonally, only along the squares of its starting colour. Okay. The bishop must always stay on squares of the same colour, and that is why it's a minor figure. As you'll soon find out if one of your bishops is captured and you only have one left. Very limited movement. At the start of a game, the bishop's movement may be considerably hampered by enemy pawns or your own blocking its way. This is a huge disadvantage compared to a knight, which can jump over them. In this diagram, the bishop's path is blocked by an enemy pawn. Isn't that lovely now? Bishops do have their strong points, however. In an open end game, two bishops can cover both wings of the board simultaneously or quickly move in behind your opponent's defensive line, constituting a long-term threat from behind. Move the white bishop as far as possible. The white bishop as far as possible should be down here. Which makes sense. Moving on. Capture the opponent's piece with the white bishop. Like that, like that. Next These thing. are the white and the black knights. Each army starts with two knights positioned between the bishops and the rooks. Copy that, boss. The knight is easy to recognize, for it usually looks like a horse. Its unique way of moving and huge offensive potential, especially during the opening moves, can be of great value to a player. Okay. Copy that. The knight moves in the shape of an L in any direction. So it can move either two squares horizontally and one square vertically, or two squares vertically and one square horizontally. I will remember that, don't worry. And if I don't, if I don't guys, just remind me. And if you want to see more episodes of this game, be sure to drop a like in the video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss a daily upload of this game load of this game or when I upload some server stuff or Valiant RP. In the diagram, the knight can move to any of the eight squares. Notice how the knight jumps from one colour to a different one. Always black to white or white to black. Okay. Just like a real horse, the knight can jump over pieces.
Our example shows that the direct route to the enemy pawn is blocked by friendly pieces, but the knight can still capture it. So a knight can attack any other piece without risking a counterattack by the same piece. And it can carry out a simultaneous attack, a fork, on more than one enemy piece as well. Oh, well, that's just absolutely lovely. The knight is at its most powerful when positioned at the centre of the board. It can cover eight squares from the board centre and four squares from the board edge, but only two squares when it's in the corner. So always remember to get your knights right into the thick of the action. I would definitely end up center. remembering that. Move the white knight to any available square. So move the white knight to any available square. Okay. That was easy. Capture the opponent's piece with the white knight. Easy. Let's move on to the next These lesson. are the white and black queens. In her starting position, the queen is located beside the king in the center of the first rank. Usually there's only one queen on each side. The exception occurs when a pawn's promoted, and this could, in theory, lead to nine queens being on the board. Oh, that's a load of queens if you ask me, people. That's a load of queens. The queen can move further and more flexibly than any other piece, so she's considered to be the strongest piece in the whole game. Losing a queen is a real body blow. So if we lose our queen, we could now end up losing a game in the future. So we don't want to end up losing our queen because, as it just said, it could be a re real body blow, which means you could end up losing the entire game. The queen always stands on the square of her own colour. White queen, white square, black queen, black square. Remember, the queen is a fashionable lady. She dresses to match her shoes. Which makes sense because girls like wearing shoes that match their outfit. The queen is the most powerful piece on the board. This is because she can control more squares than any other piece. Her Majesty can move any number of squares horizontally, vertically, and diagonally like in any piece, direction, combining the moves of the rook move and any other the place bishop. And everything. It's like the other piece as well that can move any place as well. So. The queen can't jump over a piece like the knight, oh, so her God, path so can still be blocked by other pieces, in spite of her superiority. I wish I could do that. In our example, the queen can simply remove the obstacle, the enemy bishop, by capturing him. Okay. The queen is most valuable in the second half of a game, when there are more open areas on the field and she can easily capture undefended pieces. Her range and flexibility also make her ideal for forking attacks, threatening two enemies at once. That's lovely. Thank you, everyone. Move the white queen vertically. That's just great. Vertically. Well done. Thank Move you. Move the white queen diagonally. Diagonally, so that's going to go that way. Well done. Let's hit page down. Capture the opponent's piece with the white queen. Well done. Let's hit next lesson. This is His Majesty the King. Each army can have only one king. Placed beside his queen, the king's starting position is in the center of the first row. Okay. Although he's the most important piece in the whole game, the king is also the weakest piece as far as weakest. moving and capturing enemy pieces is concerned. So he's the weakest piece. Copy that. So we don't end up... Well, we could end up losing him as he's quite weak. But yeah, again, I don't want to end up losing him because he could be very important as we find out throughout this tutorial. A king can't be captured, but he must be defended at all costs or the okay, game so is lost. To defend him. If he's threatened by an opponent's piece, meaning you're in check. The king must move to a safe square or another piece must protect the king by blocking the check. I would definitely if there's no that. legal move left Not. to save the king, the enemy has achieved a checkmate and has won the game. So let me know. If any of you know how to play chess in real life, let me know how similar the rules are in the game compared to real chess in real life. The king can move one square at a time in any direction. 
but he can't move to a square that's already occupied by a friendly piece. Yeah, that makes sense. And he can't move to a square that's under threat from an opponent's piece. That, that makes sense. would put him in check, or even checkmate. Okay, yep, that definitely makes sense. When an enemy piece is next to the king, he can defend himself by capturing it. But remember, he can't move to a square that's threatened by the enemy. In this example, the king can capture the pawn, but not the knight, which is protected by the rook. All right. The king is rarely moved at the beginning of a game, apart from moving into a good defensive position. In the end game, you can bring your king more into play and use well, him uh, in yeah, offensive I'll maneuvers. I'll definitely remember how to do that. I'll bring my game, my king into play later on in the match, which means hopefully I've got a better chance of winning the match, and then hopefully I can score a lot of victories. Move the white king anywhere. Anywhere, huh? All right, you can move there. There you go. Capture the opponent's piece with the white king. There you go. Next lesson. When his majesty is threatened by an opponent's piece, he's in check. Here, the white king is being checked by the black bishop. If your king is in check, you must get him out of check immediately. There are three ways of doing this. One, move him to a square not under attack by the enemy. Two, capture the piece that's threatening your king, but he's not allowed to place himself in check again when doing this. Okay, copy that, boss. Three, Move a piece between the king and the attacking piece so to block piece. the possible attack and end the check. So you could just move a piece in front of him to block the check, okay. I'm not sure if you need a real chess or not, but you know what they say. If you can't make any of these three moves, your king is checkmated and the game is lost. In this oh. example, the white king is in checkmate. That's not good. If we do that, that's not going to be good. I'm hoping to get a lot of victories out of this game, and I feel like it'll be a good success in the channel and everything like that if I play chess really well. So hopefully, if you want to see another episode of this game, let me know by dropping a like on this video, even though it's going to be quite boring as I'm running through the tutorial and everything. But if you guys like to see another video on it and like me actually play the game instead of just listening to a text speech tutorial, then go ahead and drop a like and join my Discord and let me know what other videos you want to see, which will be linked in the description. You don't capture a king in the game of chess. You win the game by checkmating the opposing king, not capturing him. Copy that. White king is checked. Escape the check any way possible. So he's currently checked. Which check is not the anymore. black king. Well done. So he's now in checkmate. Check the black king. Who's going to do this? So it's going to be him. Well done. Sorry about that noise effect there, guys. Just ignore it. We'll hit Protecting next. your king is your highest priority. So it's a good idea to get him to a well-protected place, especially at the beginning of a game. Okay. That's, there are two kinds Whoops. of castling. Castling kingside, or short castling, and castling queenside, long castling. The difference between the two is obvious. The rook in question either moves two or three squares. Castling moves the king to the corner, where he's less vulnerable and can be more easily protected from enemy attacks. Alrighty, that makes a lot of sense, guys. Moving on. It's a good strategy to castle around the beginning of the game, so when the king around. really needs okay. protection. Yep, and you'll definitely. also get your rook closer to the center of the board, where it's more useful. So it's more useful in the centre of the board than on the outer side of the board. Okay, I'll remember that. So if I don't, guys, remind me in chat what I forgot to do when I upload another video of this. There are four rules governing castling. One, you can't castle if you've already moved the king or the rook. This rule applies even if the piece is moved and then returned to the starting square. Two, the squares between the king and the rook must be empty. In our example, the king can't castle queenside because a knight is blocking the way between the king and the rook. 
However, the king may castle kingside. OK, yep, sure. Three, castling is impossible if the king has already been checked or castling would put him in check. In our example, the white king can't castle because if he did, he would be in check from the black bishop. Four, the king can't castle if he has to cross a square which is under attack by an enemy piece, meaning he would be in check for a moment. Castle the white king queenside. There you go. Castle the white king kingside. Like that. Castle the white king anywhere. Anywhere, yeah? There. Done. End tutorial. So, that is a tutorial done. If you did enjoy the tutorial, be sure to drop a like on it. But this is when we end off the video here today, guys. Actually, no, you know what? Screw it. We're not going to end the video here. We're going to do a game. These really are the white and black bishops. Each army contains two Oops. bishops. Escape. End game. Yeah, so I'm getting into a game really quick. So, we're not doing the tutorial anymore. We're going to get into a game really quick, okay? We're going to go into Battlegrounds, yeah? Jewel. Game Classic. Game Side. I'll go White. Difficulty. I'll put it on two. Why not? And hit Return. Jewel. Difficulty. Enter. I'll do it at the Battleground. And let's go. Let's get into a game really quick. For you amazing people who just sat through the tutorial. Alright, let's get into this, huh? Right, control Z, what are the controls, huh? So, tab controls, that, 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 okay, let me just browse over these controls really quick, guys. And I'll get straight back into you in a minute. <laughs> okay, let's do that, chess, yep, yep, okay, we're good. Return, come out of here, move him forward. Move forward. Can I take his piece? Yes, I can. One out of one. Return. What are the controls again? Slasher, space, enter, fast attack. Jewel, W, A, Z. Show controls, pause menu, E, T, E buttons, slasher, uh, block, fast attack. Okay. Enter. Why is it not working? A, W, E buttons. What is it? Up at A, up at on me. It's not letting me block anything. What's a block button? I don't know what the block button is. Block is shift. And show move W A S and D. Strong attack. So block is shift, huh? Okay, so. I hit shift. I was hitting shift. Okay, so that's lovely. <laughs> I was hitting shift, but okay. I was hitting shift, but okay. That's just nice. Nope. Move you forward. Move you forward one. Ok, 
okay. I pretty much did not remember a single thing of what I just was told. No. Alright, move you this way. Move you forward one. Alright, I need to move you that way. Eliminates my boulder, huh? White player attacks, yeah? I hit shift. I hit shift, just saying. It's easy. I'm hitting shift. And it's not doing anything. I am hitting shift and it's not doing anything. What the f is this shit? Jewel W A S and D Slash F space sleep Block attack control Block is shift strong attack is control Move is A What's W A S and D Fast attack inner chest Move cursor speed up show controls Jewel a W S and D should be doing it. Shift control. Of course, it's not going to do anything. Of course, it's not. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. I'm spamming my keyboard and it's not doing anything. Why is it not doing anything? I wonder. Okay. <laughs> I'll just take this game as a loss already by forfeiting this game because I apparently need to learn the controls a little bit more. So this is when we end off today's episode guys. If you did enjoy it be sure to drop a huge thumbs up on the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.